Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mark back in my garden today on Mark's Aquatics. Right, you wanted me to do a little temperate tank, little native marine tank with no chiller. So, I've got this old tank, this old Aqua One tank outside here. And um, I've got the lid inside with all the other hardware in there, the lights and the pumps and everything else. It's got a little back filter chamber as you can see. It's got all the old media in it. It's one of my old breeding tanks. So, I'm going to clean this out and then we can get it set up yes I came outside and I thought well what can I do I thought I know well I was cleaning out my koi pond filter you can see that water going around just doing a bit of a back drain on there that's the internal filtration that's the external filtration biological action there and then that bit in the middle there that's where it catches all the rubbish in there first before it goes in it's like a pre-filter to the biological side of the filter there just cleaning that out some monstrous big valves and things down there here's the pond my little ace is just coming out as well look at that absolutely stunning here's the fish a little bit moody hello mr mr dragon he's beautiful he is lovely with trailing fins here's the other guys coming out to say hello turn the pump off they know it's filter cleaning time right let's get my filter cleaned out and then we can clean this little tank out right that's the koi filter chores done got a nice little bucket of water there just out of my pond and here's that little tank now it's got a little rear chamber filtration on this one which as the water gets drawn through there goes down there through the separate boxes and then gets returned to the tank via that little duck bill there and that keeps it circulating around which is a, a nice thing because you can put all your bits and bobs your media and everything obviously if it was if it was warm water you'd have the heater in the back of there and everything comes with a nice little lid which is inside which just fits in there like that and then so what i'm going to do is i was just going to chuck this bucket of water in there sorry guys but I'm not, I'm not one of these big channels that's got all the flashy expensive stuff so we make do with what we've got so that's what we're gonna do. Just gonna rub that up the side there, get some of that old stuff off, give it a good old scrub out, make it look nice, get a little scrubber in there. Here's a couple. There's one. So it's basically just get the water, be careful not to pick the stones up. Just squeeze some water into the sponge. Now you know how to clean tanks out. I'm not going to take you through all this carry on. I'll do all the hard work. There you go. So we're going to scrub this little guy out, make it look all nice. And then we'll get it in the workshop and I'll show you it with the light on, okay? Aha, there you go. Bit of the old elbow grease. And we're back in business. Lovely and clean. Now with these guys, they've got a nice little lid. So the condensation is going to be kept in. It's got a nice little dual light in there, it's got an actinic blue and the normal white light as well which you can, which is going to show your corals up nice in the evening time. Little on off switch on the top, up there. Little Aqua One tanks these are, I've had this for a long long time, been breeding, I've bred many fish in this tank. Just thought I'd chuck my little sign in there because I knew it would glow up under the blue. There's the other tank over there. So this one's going to take quite a place on the bench as well. So, we're going to fill it up with water and then we're going to put some sponge. What I will say is as well guys, in the back, as I said earlier, it's a rear filtration system, okay? Water goes in on the left hand side, goes through that filter boxes at the back which you put sponges in. You can put bits of live rock in there from the beach if you want to aid in filtration because it'll have bacteria already on it. So this is a good little idea to put some little stones in the back, some porous ones if you can find them. Um, that'll speed up your uh, your cycling process. But I thought this might happen and so what I've been doing is I've been cycling some filters in here, some sponges which I can fit to size and put into the other aquarium you see. I run this tank a little bit quieter, a little bit lower on temperature and um, so we got all these to cut to fit in there. Now if you haven't got this, you're going to have to go through the, the cycling process as usual. There's all kinds of stuff swimming around in there, look. Little... 
little sand uppers there all over the place little starfish in amongst the in amongst that so that's what we're gonna have to do I'll go through it with you actually you know with the cycling process you can either do it with some colony if you want to put that in it will start off the bacterial cycle or the stuff you get from the beach um, and we put in there that's gonna have bacteria on it anyway so we're only going to be putting small creatures in here but it's going to have to do its cycle nevertheless so that's what we're going to take i'll take you through that as we go obviously this is for you guys to be watching so you're not going to be wanting to spend a couple of weeks waiting for things to cycle and what have, uh, what have you so i thought i'd get a little head start so we can keep things rolling for you and keep it interesting for you guys to watch okay now what i'm going to do with this i'm going to cut this to size in here and then I'm going to leave it in there, okay? Because I've got like a, one of the sponges from inside from the make, from that little tank we're going to use as a template. So I can cut them all in there. And then obviously I'll let that just slowly, slowly lose temperature over time. So I don't, I'm not going to shock any of the bacteria by putting cold water straight on top of it because it's been used to 24, 25 degrees. So um, I don't want to shock any of that and have a, have a die off. So we'll let that slowly, slowly acclimatize or acclimate back down and then we can just get everything rolling from there okay back in the other side of the workshop now now here are the sponges that fit in those chambers down the back so i'm going to take those into the other side now and i'm going to cut them sponges to size and then we can put them in the back and that'll already have that colonization now this tank is scratched the person that i got it off originally i think used a wire brush or an angle grinder to clean the glass absolutely terrible look at that but when it's full of water it's not too too bad the only thing is is we see that the algae will actually form in those little scratches so you've got to keep it scrubbed quite regularly but with the snails and things we're going to put in here they should graze it off quite good Hope. and then what i might do what i could do is i could actually take some of the sea lettuce from here when I actually cut this out and some of the dulse and I'll just super glue that to a rock and um, you'll be surprised what will come out of it I might actually pinch a few of these little rocks hello I might pinch a few of these little rocks from down here and put them in this tank as well because there's nothing special on them apart from a little bit of coralline algae and some more little weed bits down here and maybe that bit of dulse so we haven't got to take anything else from the wild we can just take we can use what we've got in here actually and just move a little bit of it over there's only those it's only the dolls and the main weeds and things which we can leave on those big rocks at the back so we're going to use stuff but we'll get into that as we go it's great fun i love all this yeah like i said very scratched up but it'll do and we can we can learn from this like i say you can go back and you can, you can go buy yourself a brand new tank if you like if you can't find a second hand one anywhere it's, con well, it's entirely up to you really I'm just trying to give you the knowledge so you can go forward in I get so many questions saying oh I really don't know if I can do this give it a go it's not as hard as you as it looks and that's why I'm going to take you through this okay as we go it's only going to be very very shallow warm water pool stuff we're going to put in there so it's going to look lovely like like that but in a different way that's all Right, okay guys we're just going to be using some regular beach sand that I brought back from the beach little bag there you don't have to use beach sand you can use very fine sand you can buy from a builders merchant make sure you wash it out well it's all off the beach originally so uh, that's fine to use as a substrate I'd put a put about an inch and a half two inches deep so different things can burrow into it like worms and stuff like that as they as they emerge from the rocks and the stuff you collect over time so that's what we're going to put in make sure you give it a good wash i'm going to give this a good wash it's been outside for a while so we'll uh, we'll give it a clean and we'll put it in the tank right freshly washed out sand stick it in the tank right okay the sand is now in the tank so now we've just got to get our little paddle i got one of these for my aquascaping stuff but basically you just got to scatter it around now and make a nice little effect that you like now with these kinds of bow fronted tanks I like to just give it a good layer over the top and then work it work it towards the back 
because then that gives you a big like a more of a depth of field through these little tanks so higher at the back to lower in the front and you'll see what I mean when it's all done Right, okay guys, we're full up with RO water now. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add some salt. Right, I've just lifted the lid up, so it's gonna be a little bit blue, but I'm gonna put in three of those cups of salt that you see me put in on the last ones, okay? They come with the salt. I'm just gonna sprinkle that in. There's nothing in there at the moment. So it's not gonna worry anything. It's just gonna settle on the sand. and then it will slowly dissolve so we'll stick that one in there and let's stick another one in and then let it run for a couple of hours and then it will just have all dissolved by the time we get back very simple setup and obviously we haven't filled the tank right up yet because we're going to have water displacement when we put the stones in as you push things in like that you push the water up you see water displacement fantastic so that's just going to swirl around in there now and slowly dissolve with that pump you can agitate it around if you like with your little tongs and different things but it will just evap it will just literally dissolve within a couple of hours and then it'll be gone. So I'll get back to you when it's all gone. Right, okay. Now, the salt has dissolved. I've had my little salt uh, salinity checker there. Little... Oh, you know, I can show you out of the way now. You're going to have to get one of these little guys, okay? It's called a refractor meter. Or you can use one of the other ones. That you dip in the water and um, but they're not I find not as accurate as these okay so it's, it's best to get one they're only about 10 10 quid something like that so pretty cheap to buy if you saw the other video on the big tank where I did a water change you just put a couple of drops of water on that glass close that lid you look through the eyepiece and you'll see the scale on there and you want 0 0.026 or 35 parts per thousand on the other scale on the right hand side okay anyway the salt is now in the tank giving that a quick wipe down a little bit cloudy in there because of the buffers and things that are in the water but they will soon clear up okay so now we're just going to let that sit for a while now and let that chug away let that filter take it through the back there now i've put the sponges in the back as well okay those preceded sponges from my coral room there in the back so that's going to aid up a little bit of speed and also we're going to take some other little bits from the the main marine tank the big one over there just to seed that with some little bits of weed a couple of little bits of rocks and things like that okay which aren't going to come to any harm because i can always pick up other bits when i go down the beach as well but what i have got outside is a lot of old sea rocks that i've had for many many years now and they've been sat out in the garden there's some quite nice shapes so what i might do is grab some of those 
and put them in there and see how they go there's no point taking from the beach when you don't have to so I've got a lot of stuff out here so I'll just reuse some of the stuff that I've taken on previous forages right there's a couple of rocks from out the garden now they look quite nice quite a thin one but it looks like it looks like the moon on there so I might actually put that one flat down in the tank and maybe that one upright in a corner because it's got a bit of a bit of a triangular edge to it there so I might go up the side with that and have maybe the back wall with some different weeds on and different things you still see the old barnacles on this piece here from many many years ago they're still on there so what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to play around with that for a little bit and um, see where I can put things and we'll go from there I think right I've got the rocks in we've got that lovely big flat plate going across there lots of air obviously coming out of the rock because it's been outside for a long long time as with that piece at the back as well now I actually got these pieces off a of rest bay well oh, a few years back now and I always thought I'd keep hold of them because they were nice pieces and it just looks like I just thought it just looks really nice like that I think with that nice bit across that little bit of sand at the base there lots of holes around the back for little shrimps and little fish to hide obviously it's a bit murky now a bit of detritus on the rocks and things I gave them a quick rinse off and um, and they're in there now so uh, now we've got to leave it for a while to self seed itself I'm going to drop a little bit of um, shrimp in there like I normally do so that's going to start to rot down and to create that nitrogen cycle well we've got a bit of a nitrogen cycle already happening in there because of that pre-seeded filter from my coral room which is in the back so we've got a bit of bacteria in there already um, you could also add a little jar of bottle of colony as well if you like a lot of people do it when they first add fish um, you can do that if you like um, because then that's going to put a lot of ba bacteria into that water so with those fish start producing waste it's going to it's going to attack that straight away okay or you can buy these little bio balls that you can put in the back as well I've got a few of those I might throw a few of those in the back as well just to help things go along these tanks I think are the best to get I mean you can get an obviously you can get an, an all glass tank but I love the fact that the filtration is all built into these so it's a desktop you've got no filters canisters to worry about internal filters to that look absolutely unsightly and horrible in my opinion I know everyone's got a budget and I know everyone can afford these things but you can pick these little aqua one tanks up or a Kent setup. It's got the marine lights already in it. It's got everything you need. It's a plug in and play. That's why I go for this. Because if you try and get all the bits separately, it's up to you. I'm not saying you have to do it this way. If you've got a bit, you know, if you've got deeper pockets and you fancy shelling out a little bit more and buying another tank or getting a tank built or whatever and following these videos along, you can either go down the chiller route, which is this one over here, or you can go this one here right okay guys we've got the all the rocks in I've got them how I want them to be I can see the end result already in my mind I've got all that um, sorted out where I'm going to put the weed where I'm going to put other little bits we've got a nice little area of beach at the front there if we put any tiny little things in there that can go like the sand now this tank is quite a blue tank it's a marine tank um, it's an aqua one I think or a Kent I can't remember it's got no markings on it but it's one or the other but obviously I've got the darker sand in there see so it makes it look quite dark when you look at the other tank it looks bright now I've got super bright lights over the top of that and a lot of it because of the weed that I'm growing this tanks gonna be more your budget type without a heater that you can put in your house and you're gonna have a thriving little rock pool within the house okay where temperatures can get up to you know the higher sort of end of the 20s degrees Celsius so um, you can put coral sand in there as well if you want to brighten the tank up I put coral sand in this one and if you I'm going to leave this one the way it is with the darker sand and what I'm going to do is just put like I say the weeds and different things everywhere well, you'll see it progress as we go along and when we forage for certain and different bits for it but like I said, you, you can put some coral sand in there, that'll brighten it right up. It's cloudy at the moment. When it goes super clear, 
we'll give that now a couple of days to settle in and um, and we'll go from there any questions guys just drop it in the comment section below and I'll get back to you you know that any questions at all um, but I think we've gone far enough on this on stage one we've got the tank we've cleaned the tank out we've got it ready we've added the salt we've mixed that into the tank so you haven't got to worry about buckets in here and buckets there just chuck that salt straight in it's a very very simple process it's nowhere near as hard as people make it out to be and just take things slow now you've got that main body of water in there you've got your substrate in there you've got the rock work in there now you can just leave it you can add, you can add some um, bacteria balls if you like and chuck them in the in the rear into the sump bit at the back there that's going to start releasing billions of little bacteria and put your piece of shrimp in or something just so we're doing um, a full cycle as it were a fishless cycle it's called where you're not putting a little fish in there and of course then the ammonia is going to creep up as it does through the nitrogen cycle and burn its gills and most likely either kill it or injure it badly through ammonia burn to the gills okay and we don't want to be doing that to fish that's why it's super important guys when you're setting up a tank that you're not too hasty putting fish in okay um, people put colony in you can do that it sort of works you know you're adding a big amount of bacteria in and the fish produce the waste I don't do it that way personally I like to just let wait for a couple of weeks let that prawn decay in there let it blow around you can chuck some bio balls in the back but that nitrogen cycle will take place as soon as that bit of food starts to rot down in the sand your bacteria are going to grow they're going to colonize as that's rotting down releasing that ammonia they're going to build up and build up and build up and then that ammonia will drop away the more bacteria that is formed within the tank then the nitrite will be spiking after that and then after that that'll drop and then your nitrate will go up and that is what you've got to keep under control okay this you're going to have a little bit of nitrate and i would suggest like with the other tank having some nitrate in the tank for the weed to feed on because we're going to be putting weed in there and it's not like a coral reef where you want it to be all nice and lovely pink coralline algae you want these algae to be center of attention and to grow and to look lovely just like the other tank over there so believe it or not that tank is going to look very similar to the first tank in a couple of weeks time as you saw if you haven't watched the series on this tank pop back in my playlists and there's a whole section in there designated to this to that build okay because it's got the chiller on it it's got everything else on it it's a little bit more advanced but this one is the one for you if you're new to it and you just want one for your house so I think we've gone far enough there on on day one um, to get this all together obviously I've done it a lot quicker I've got the knowledge behind me to do this but take your time it doesn't matter if you spend two weeks three weeks or a month setting the tank up to get to this stage okay I just know the exact route and path to take to get where I want to be because I've been doing it for so long so don't rush it don't think he did it in two minutes I can do it in two minutes because you might do something different any questions always drop it in the comment section below and I'll answer you but now we've got the rock work in place releasing lots and lots of bubbles because that water is now soaking in and that air is coming out we've got the rock work where I want it I think it looks pretty awesome like that I can see all sorts going on in there in a couple of weeks and as always, you're all stars, love your loads, take care, and I'll see you on the next episode of Mark's Aquatics. Hit that subscribe button, guys, and that notification bell if you like my little videos, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.